Yeah, welcome to Cool Your Soul here with Stephen Goldstein. Thank you for coming on the show. I'm grateful that you're you're in the studio present, like physical, the physical flesh. Mm -hmm. You're not a robot. Nope, I can't say I am. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, man, it's good. It's a different feeling to have you in the studio, like physically. And we're just going to be chatting up. He's a musician, guitarist, and bassist, and producer as well. You do, uh, you're in the uh, music, what club are you in at UD? I'm in the music production club. Uh, shout out to my guys in there. That's where you met Arkham, right? Yes, that's how I met my drummer, and we started Arkham through that. So I basically. Um, it my uh, it was started in late 2021. I sent out a giant group, uh, giant text in the group chat, basically saying I'm looking for musicians, because I know it's a production based club, but I definitely knew there was a lot of people that play instruments as well. Um, so a lot of people did respond to it. Um, I met them in person. We met at Starbucks on Newark's Main Street, and out of that, only one person. Um, I cont I continued with only one person. Um, his name is Jake. Shout out to my boy Jake. Um, he's the drummer. Um, and for a while it was just me and him, and we played with a bass player for a bit named Trey. Um, and now um, we're playing as a four piece. It's me, the Jake. Our singer's name is Tanny, and our other guitarist's name is Jacob. So yes, there's a Jake and a Jacob in the band. They're both awesome guys. I really love working with them. Yeah. So like. Is that club like do you like make like beats in it or like we make beats we can we make full songs it's just for collaboration to you know create a community of music producers that's awesome that's really cool um and jake is nuts on the band on, on the drums like i love jake he's, Not, he's killing good. it he plays with so much conviction so much energy he really makes the crowd go crazy great guy Love working with them. Yeah. I mean, you were going to the, what's it called? When you did that guitar, was it a soul? I don't know, but you were on the ground. Oh, yeah. Um, you like going on the ground. Yeah. Home, everyone that plays with me live knows that I do a lot of on-stage antics. I like to run around. Um, that's why I have a wire, always, have, always, always have wireless. Um, I get on my knees with the flag that burns around me at the end. I'll usually take my guitar and put it behind my head. Um, the subtronics of like run out and go crazy, you know, and same with Arkham. So yeah, I love doing on stage antics. It always gets people into it. Um, you know, make them it breaks the ice. It does. It like make like um the audience interaction is key. Yeah, we want it to be a party. Yes. That's yeah, that's a good way to look at it. Like it's like there's not really a barrier between you and the audience mm -hmm. you're you're all uh one and the same we're all we're all in yeah. this together yeah. yeah we're all in it definitely rock and fucking roll um now you're in a lot of bands yes. as we said what was the first band you got involved with it's a little complicated um but technically out of time was the first band i started um so, well, the first series band I started, I'll get into the other stuff before, maybe a little later. But, um, yeah, Out of Time was the first one I started with my uh, drummer, who's currently the drummer of The Flag That Burns, Aiden. And um, we had a guy who sang, played acoustic guitar, his name was Dominic. And that started all the way back in 2016. I was in seventh grade. Yeah, I was in seventh grade, so it was a long time ago. Um, we started just jamming together. Um, and... Then we put it to the side for the gateway, which turned into the flag that burns currently. That project started in 2018. And that we and so the drummer carried over from that and he's not out of time currently. Um, but yeah, so it was weird. All the like members from that project carried over, except except for me and out of time. I continue, you know, working on the project by myself for a while until I did get new members in 2021. Um, I got some new members, and we've been going strong since. But, um, yeah, the flag that burns, uh, we just continue to continue to work together. Uh, we just put out an EP last month called Drew's Garage, which is the name of the building that we started in, um, in Pine Island, New York. And, yeah, it's going great with them. Um, love those guys to death. 
we keep working on it together. What's the meaning behind the name, the flag that burns? Like, what does that mean? So I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> um, So the gateway was our first name. That one had a lot more meaning just because back in, um, you know, back in our scene, a lot of the bands, and I mean, I love their sound. This isn't criticizing them, but a lot of, they were very like light bands. Like they were very indie rock based, um, which is awesome. I love, love indie rock. Um, but there wasn't really any heavy bands or like punk bands or anything like that. Um, so that was like, we were like the gateway for people in that area to get back into, um, get back in more heavier music. Um, because yeah, upstate New York just didn't cut it with like heavy music. So we wanted to bring it back. The flag that burns, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, we just chose something because it sounded cool because they wanted to do a rebrand. I was okay with the rebrand. Um, you know, I wasn't gung-ho on it, maybe like how they were, but I was okay with it. I'm like, the gateway, eh, I understand what how they mean. It could sound like a little bit like an out, you know, an outdated name. So I'm like, cool. We could just, um, we could just, um, you know, be called something badass. And so the flag that burns was the name that we ended up picking. Actually, my drummer Aiden picked that name. Um, and it's funny because since then, we've garnered a little bit of controversy, not too much, but just a little bit of controversy, people thinking it's a political statement or something. And I just laugh at it, really, because it's not political. It's just, we just thought the name sounded fucking cool, you know? Yeah, like sometimes it's not like that complicated. Like with like, yeah. all, like sometimes it's good to be like, you know, meaningful sometimes. Of course, but, but yeah. Like, Sometimes it's just the fucking cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I, would, I would say listen to our song. If you really want to know what our band's about, listen to our songs. They are deep and have lots of meaning. Yeah. Now, how long have you been playing like guitar? So I started playing guitar 2016, so I am not mathing right now. I think Nine that's years. seven. I think that's seven. 2016, so oh, yo. Oh, no, seven years. Uh, seven, yeah. Seven years. Sorry, I'm bad at math. Seven years. Um, Yeah, I started playing seven years ago. Um, And, um, yeah, I've been enjoying it. Um, I still use my first guitar, fun fact. My first guitar was a one of those typical Squire Strats. Um, but I made very few modifications to it, and I still currently use it a lot. Um, And it's funny, I've gotten a couple of compliments that are like, Oh, when I first saw you on stage with a squire, I was like, oh, this guy's going to sound like shit. <laughs> but then they hear me and they're like, oh, it sounds so good. It's like those modifications I've made. And also the amp I run my guitar through does help. Um, it's a Blackstar uh, Club 40 Mach 2. Yeah. Like, what was the first song that you learned and mastered on guitar, like a long, big song, like, you know what I mean? Not like hot cross songs, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I got you. Um, So my favorite band, like I said, I was talking about how much I love indie rock. My favorite band is Foster the People, an indie rock band. <laughs> mm. Um, And their big hit, Pumped Up Kicks, Um, I loved that song since I was a little kid. And I know it's really easy. It's got one bass slash guitar riff and four chords, and that's the whole song on guitar. So it was a great beginner song to get into. Um, and that was the first song, like when I first played the dun 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 dun, yeah, dun, dun yeah. I was like, wow, this is freaking cool. I was like, wow, this is, this is great. I was like, I get to play my favorite song now. Um, and even playing like the guitar part in the, um, bridge, like in the final chorus, that was really fun to play too. And it made me think, yeah, I really want to keep rec uh, like recreating my favorite songs and keep going with that and hopefully make my own at some that at some point you're getting shit for liking most of people because the pump up kicks is like oh yeah i do <laughs> yeah i got it from my own band because um uh the flag that burns up i'm referring to um because we, we originally um covered that um and i could tell they were not into it but i'm like this is my favorite song man and they're like nah so i was like all right we will do it with you um i still currently cover that song with septronics um, that's the I want to see that. I was about to say we're gonna be playing it tomorrow. Um, and every time we played it, it got really, really great reception. Like the whole crowd sings it with us, and it's just it's great. Um, I've played it at least once with with all of them. Out of time, we used to play that. Um, 
The three covers we used to do in out of time was Pumped Up Kicks, What You Know by Two Hour Cinema Club, and Enter Sandman by Metallica. So kind of a weird variation, but that's how it worked. Um, and then um, Arkham, we did Pumped Up Kicks way back in the very beginning when we were just bossing on Main Street. Me and Jake would play it, and we have not played it since. And I don't think we will because it's not really our style. Yeah. What what would you consider like Arkham style to be? It's kind of diverse, um, but I would generally say hard rock slash punk music is yeah. what I would generally say it is. I know we have some light songs like Waiting for Your Love and um, Pockets. is uh, It's it's more of a fun- funky-ish kind of tune. Um, but yeah, I would definitely say like stay, like songs that we have like Stay Away and All Right, um, they're in your home. They're like really what we're about. What would you say it was like the most emotional performance experience you've uh, had? I've had a lot of performances over the years. Um, hmm. I think the one that hit me the most, this is going to sound very cheesy, was the first gig I ever played with the, with the flag that burns, I think. And it wasn't that big of like a place we played at. Um, there was maybe 15, 20 people, but let me tell you, the first time I played in front of them and like, I played the songs right. And we all like, were happy with how we played that like planted a seed in me and the other members to just like, we want to keep pushing forward with this. And now I'm in that band plus three others. And I, I think that's really what planted the seed in me that I can do this. Yeah. You're like, yo, I didn't mess up. Yeah. Fuck up, let's go. I yeah, can do man. this. I can function doing music. Yeah. yeah. That reminds me of um, the first time I did a like a play at school. Like, I was like in fifth grade. Yeah. I was like, yeah, there's this adrenaline feeling after you like get off this uh like or done with the thing or get off the stage, whatever. Like where you bow down or everybody's cheering. And that that adrenaline feeling like is I can't I don't under I can't match that feeling of like positivity. There's a couple of things that I matched it like down like recently when I you know, but there's that kind of you ever you get that adrenaline feeling after oh, yeah. like something is done where it's like oh, like I did it. <laughs> yeah no some yeah no I I get that feeling a lot and it feels good. It does. It's like it's like after like a really good workout. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. I'm not, times 10 i'm not oh sorry what was it saying no like a really good workout times 10 oh yeah yeah yeah. um i know i definitely get that feeling when i work out because I, I like to work out a lot and yeah no i know i definitely get the adrenaline high especially when i'm running um but i did get a similar adrenaline feel in one of my more recent shows um i played a show with the flag that burns last month um, I went all the way back to New York, um, and we played at a place in Middletown, New York, called the Dojo. I'm going to be honest, I was very skeptical with the place to begin with, because it literally was a fucking dojo. We were playing in the basement. That's I was like, awesome. I was like, who the fuck is going to show up to this shit? Especially, like, during the college year. Like, I didn't, I didn't know a lot of people were going to show up. Um, we played with four other bands, or three other bands, on uh, three other bands. It was, four, it was a four-band set. Um, and... There was a lot of people that showed up, so for, when that happened, I was like, hey, this is going to be, you know, not as bad as I thought it was going to be. And then, two, they were very energetic. The crowd was very energetic with the other crowd, so I'm like, oh, this is going to be fun when we're up. And then we do go up, and I, it was like a fever dream. That whole show was like a fever dream to me. Everyone was really well into it. I was playing guitar in a mosh pit, in a mosh pit. It That's was nice. really freaking fun to do um i did the thing like i was talking about earlier with the guitar behind my back um at the end kneeling down um everyone was into it everyone had a fun time i had a fun time up there um i think that show actually did bring like us it sounds cheesy but i think it brought us closer together and one other show i will mention um was we were talking about it before the show when um arkham played at uh, the secret tunnel mm. that was peak that was peak right there. Everyone, it was kind of similar. I was talking about like with my band playing, you know, in the basement with JoJo. Um, there was it was mobbed. 
just like that show. It was completely mobbed the basement. Um, everyone was into it. I also played guitar in a mosh pit there. Very fun to do. Um, and I think that also brought um, Arkham together, um, especially because that was only our second show with our singer, Tanny. Um, and yeah, it definitely brought us closer together, for sure. Definitely, this is like so congested. Like, you know what I mean? It's, it, it is. Um, but it's fun. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm not really a claustrophobic kind of guy, so I'm okay with it. And oh, like, yeah, that, yeah. That, in that matter, case, yeah. I had a lot of fun because I was up there rocking my ass off with my with you know my best friends. It was great. Yeah, I like I like that that energy they had there. It was it was crazy, and everybody was banging on the uh, the air conditioning vent, and there was all this yeah, I love dust. When that happens. And the dust would like fall down. And yep. It was nuts. Yeah. It really was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. You're a man of faith too. Is that true? Correct. Does that, I am a man of faith. Does that like help your like musical process at all? Like, does it? Does it like? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely does. So, um, I've been doing music, um, you know, religiously for a long time. Um, first off, before every gig, I do pray. Um, I do pray. You know that not not praying that like oh we play like out of this mind people go crazy, but it's just you know, asking God for us to have the strength to play the best of our ability. Um, and I think that, I always think that always works uh, because that's what I see what we always do. Um, and I mean, I was talking about before, I, like I have a history in terms of playing. Like I played bass in my church since I was in high school. Um, I'm in InterVarsity, which is a Christian fellowship. Um, I'm at the University of Delaware um, and I played guitar, bass and drums for them. And it's always fun just to combine my, what I believe in with uh, music. So yes, faith is faith. Faith and my belief in God and Jesus has brought me basically from the depths of hell where I was in high school. I was mentally not well in high school. It definitely brought me out of that and brought me to where I am currently, which is very happy with what I'm doing. High school sucks. <laughs> it did. High school. High school. It was. It was rough. I mean, yeah, I had. I had a lot of problems in high school. I'm just glad it's, I'm glad I'm past that though. I am. Yeah, like once you kind of grow up and you like find like yourself and like what you're into, like yeah. like like that can mean like faith. That can mean like like working out. You know, it can mean a yeah. hundred different things. Yep. But like once you kind of figure yourself out, like everything kind of evens out. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it takes a lot a while to do that, like a little bit. Yep. I agree. Yeah. Now, we're mainly kind of talking about like rock and roll, punk, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But is there any other kind of genres that you, you kind of tap into and like listen to? So, um, I noticed in here you have some black metal records. Oh, uh, yeah, I love black metal. I, I'm not crapping on black metal because I mean, I, I, there's some t- very talented musicians, but I am into its sister subgenre, death metal. I love death yeah. metal. I love deathcore. I love metalcore. I like all the extreme types of metal, thrash metal, new metal, like my two favorites of that. Um, but I also love all the extreme shit. It's just really fun. I love when people scream their ass off. It's just, it, it gets me going. I love listening to that stuff when I work out. Um, but I also listen to a lot of, I grew up on reggae. I don't think a lot of people know that. My grandfather and my father really got me into like reggae when I was younger. Um, I also grew up before I liked rock music. I liked pop, um, which I mean, it's it's still a guilty pleasure here and there. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I also really like hip hop music. Um, I've gotten to that a lot in the past five years, old and new, per- preferably like '90s, early 2000s. Hip hop is my favorite. Um, Dr. Dre is my favorite rapper, and I like I like jazz too. Um, my guitar teacher got me into jazz when I took guitar lessons. Like okay. you. Um, I really like Wes Montgomery, um, Duke Ellington, hey. things like that. Duke, Duke Ellington is something else. He slaps. I like his like piano stuff mainly, like like uh, the Queen Sweet yeah. single pedal of Rose. That song mm-hmm. specifically. Two songs I want to shout out that really have like helped me grow as a musician. Actually, three songs. Autumn Leaves. That one is a classic. That one really got me you know, working with my hands better. Take five was helping me a lot with um uh 
like odd time signatures and odd rhythms. And then Watermelon Man, which was my very first jazz song. Um, I really enjoyed that. It actually inspired me to actually make a jazz song. Out of Time has one called 3 AM Lounge. It's an instrumental track. But um, yeah, it inspired me to make that. And I definitely want to make a couple more out of time jazz songs for sure. What's that called again? The song? Yeah, the jazz song. 3 AM Lounge. Yeah, yeah I'm going to listen to that later. Yeah, yeah, it's it's I'm not gonna it's it means my first jazz piece I've ever written, but I thought it was good enough to release, so yeah. Now you're kind of stepping into new territory with the, being the basis for Subtronics. Um, mm-hmm. can you talk about like how that came about? Um, so this this started September of 22, so last year. Um, I was at a party that my friend was throwing called Money Stock, which was like a hip hop concert. Everyone was freaking great during that. I loved, I, I loved when he threw hip, uh, Money Stocks. They were so much fun. Um, and then, right as I was leaving, because I got tired, um, it was the weekend. I think I was going home for something. I start going down the stairs, walking out, and there's this guy who was walking with me that i didn't know but he was being very friendly to me we both were not you know the most sober people most sober at the time um his name was brandon um and he was talking to me that he plays guitar and sings and wants to you know work with other musicians because i guess he overheard me talking about it sometime during the party um and i was like yeah i uh you know i um I don't really want to find a project where I can play bass because I'm in three bands where I play guitar. I know you don't hear guitars saying that much. Oh, I want to play bass. Well, if I'm in three bands where I play guitar, there is, you know, musically, I would like to expand a little bit and play bass for one band. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, I would like, you know, I would definitely like somewhere I play bass. And we exchanged Snapchats. Um, as cringe as it sounds, instead of phone numbers, we exchanged Snapchats. And we, you know, texted that weekend. Um, we made a um, Google Doc about songs that we wanted to cover, um, and we just started going with that. And then Brandon is even more than me; he's into music production. Um, and we started like making indie type music at his place, um, where he would like create a song and I would lay a baseline over it, and we would, um, you know, finish it out. And that's basically how it went for almost a year. Um, we had our first gig in May of last year, uh, sorry, not May of last year, May of this, you know, previous school year, so May 2023, um, we played in, uh, Perkins Center in, Del- in, um, you know, University of Delaware, and it was really fun, um, our drummer for Arkham, Jake, he stepped in, which we appreciated, he played the drums for us for our first gig, um, and people seemed to like it, so we were like, yeah, we should definitely get this going. We should find a real drummer, you know, like someone that actually is going to play drums full time for us. And we did, um, in September, you know, this semester, um, we got a guy named uh, Gavin. Um, he's great, he instantly clicked with us. Like, we knew from when we like auditioned him, very friendly towards us. We had all had, we had the same type of interests and everything. We were like, yeah, this guy is definitely going to be in the band. Um, and he's been nothing short of great. Um, uh, he quick, we quickly caught him up on everything, all the covers that we were doing and the originals. Um, and we've just been continuing the right ever since. And he's played two gigs so far with us, and he's going to play his third with us tomorrow. He's been great. And, yeah, that's basically the history of Subtronics I just explained. <laughs> and... Um... That's the dude we were talking. I I met a one girl him. Yes, Brandon. Yep. The nice dude. Great guy. The nice, nice dude. Um, I me and him were talking about um, Dick. He knows I did Dick Kennedy sure. So he was like, "Yeah, you have Dick Kennedy," and he showed me his punk playlist. I was like, "Oh, this dude's smart." Yeah. You yeah. Know what I mean, I would not. I really wasn't expecting him to be into punk like how he was. Just like telling off of him. He came across to me as, like, a very, like, laid-back indie type of guy, which he still is. Um, yeah. He really likes bands like Tame Impala. He likes Mac DeMarco. Yeah. So I was, that was the vibes I was getting from. He also likes hip-hop, too, like Travis Scott and stuff and, uh, you know, Tyler Creator. And, yeah, that's what we vibed off of. And, then, yeah, he showed me one point, like, his punk playlist, and I'm like, Dude, you're even cooler than I thought. <laughs> yeah, like he yeah. knows. He knows. Yeah. He knows. I think he had the song. 
Kill the Poor by the Dead Kennedys on it. That was crazy. That was a, that's a good song. That is a good song. Do you like the Dead Kennedys? Yeah, I like them and Black Flag. I would say yeah. those are my two favorite like hardcore punk bands. I'm okay with the Misfits. I've been getting into them recently. Yeah. What's that band? That's really good. The Descendants. I have not listened to them yet. The uh, Agent Orange. Have you heard of Agent Orange? I've heard of them. I've been getting into uh, the other bands. I've been getting into like they're like in that same pedigree. It would be like um, Rancid. I listen to Rancid. I think they're very good. Yeah. Um. Obviously, the classic Ramones. I love the Ramones. Not even just like Blitzkrieg Pop. Like I actually listen to them on a regular basis. Like songs like Rockaway Beach. Um. And Teenage Lobotomy, like, those are great, great songs. Um, and, you know, they were the first to do it, and, you know, you can tell they, like, set the, the groundwork for everything that came afterwards. Yeah. And even, like, punk in general, it's set. That was heavily inspiring to m- one of my favorite bands, Metallica. Um, they're, you know, thrash metal band. They were all inspired by, like, all these um, punk bands, too. Obviously, they were also inspired by Black Sabbath, Diamond Head, Motorhead. Motorhead was very inspired by punk, by the way. And uh, Venom, I believe they also really liked. Venom is like, 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 um, like if you don't, like, if you like have a hard time, like, if somebody listening or, or you or have a hard time, <laughs> like, with intense black metal, if you listen to Venom, it's very, like, accessible. And, yeah. like, it's like you can, yeah, first off, it's in English. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm actually good with them. I I'm chill I'm chill with Venom actually. I I think they're pretty good. So like you not like uh, Burzum? Like are you like a anti Burzum dude? I wouldn't say I wouldn't say that. Okay. You just like you just like the other types of metal more. Yes. Yeah. What's well, like an example of a death metal band that you like? Um, I really really like Cattle Decapitation. They really got me into um. Metal, which is funny because I know they're like super vegans, and I am probably one of the most like meat eating people you can imagine. I yeah. just love eating burgers and shit. <laughs> but um, no, their music is very good. They're good. They're like their drummer is very talented. The guitarist is very talented. I like Travis Ryan's vocals a lot. Um, they're a band I've really really enjoyed. I've also enjoyed Chelsea Grin a lot. Love the guitars. Um, love the vocals. Um, even Cannibal Corpse I've been getting into. They're pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Cannibal they, Corpse is very yeah. good. Um, I used to not like the vocals. I love, I always loved the guitars. I just, and when I was younger, I didn't like the vocals as much, and they grew on me big time, um, recently. Did you see that, um, shooting blood from your cum? Oh, oh how he introduces the song, I Cut Blood, yeah. And when they, when this... <laughs> And the security guard, there's like this video of them performing on the security guard. Yeah, the security guard's like, like, what? What the fuck? <laughs> honestly, honestly, if I didn't listen to the type of music, uh, I, I I would probably react the same way. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. yeah. Like, I was at the, sui- like, the Suicide Boys concert, and there was like... They're pretty good. I like them. All their... Me and my cousin love them together. Their openers are like trap metal dudes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, you got Ghost Main... And cemetery and city morgue, like they're all in, and I could. There's like these videos online with the security guards, like, what the fuck is this? Because Suicide love, Boys, like everybody loves Suicide Boys. Ghost Man is very good. Oh my god, I, I love actually Ghost have a Man. funny story about that. So you know, I was talking about you know, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, and I'm in um, you know, inner varsity. I actually showed one of the pastors that he's um, he works as a um. He's like a like a counselor also for like you know people guiding people on their faith. He, me and him have similar music tastes, and you know he wanted recommendations for me. One of the ones I gave him was Ghost Main. <laughs> His reaction to that was pretty funny. Do you like it? Oh, he was like, oh, I liked your other ones better. Yeah. But um, I thought his reaction to it was pretty funny, just because I don't think he was expecting me to listen to that type of music because I was talking about like Green Day and other types of music I've listened to. But yeah, um. And then, um, yeah, I also recommend him, and I would recommend anyone to listen to listen to Mammoth W V H. Um, Eddie Van Halen's sons in a band. Um, Eddie Van Halen's the reason why I play guitar, and that guy, and his son's band is amazing. I've saw him live three times. I know I'm getting off track here. <laughs> no, you good. You um, like about the, like I know a lot of um, oh, what do they say? 
like peaceful people, I guess, that like crazy music. Like, you know what I mean? Like I'm. It I'm, keeps me sane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It like, really does. Though. Yeah. Like, it keeps me sane. Like, I, I, I like I've listened to death metal while like going to fucking sleep. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It literally keeps me sane. I listen to it while I work out. Oh, I'll listen to anything when I work out. I mean, uh, I think death metal means like any other type of music where I'll just listen to it whenever the fuck I feel like it. Um, and I can literally be in the most calmest mood and just smile and just hear like in the ears and I'll be like perfectly fine. Or I can listen to something like um, Tim and Paula and be like just chill in the same exact way. Yeah. I don't need like a specific mood to get into it. I just if if it pops in my head that I want to listen to it, I'll just listen to it, you know? Thanks. Yeah. I, I like I, I like I'm 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 peaceful, like you know what I mean? I didn't like I'm Buddhist, so like I have a lot of like friendly philosophies and shit. Yeah. But like but like I need crazy music to like sometimes function. Like sometimes it's like I calm down, I put on like you know, Velvet Underground and Bob Dylan or Simon and Garfunkel or Jim Kersey, Nick Drake, Tim Buckley, just relax. Uh-huh. Richie Havens and then one day it's like Spurs, um, Mental Warfare, like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, Suicide Boys, Ghost Man. Yeah. It's, like, just complete crazy shit. Like, you know, it's, like, sometimes you need to, you gotta have that, like, um, what do they say? The yin yang. How I've described it to people that don't understand it is, like, this type of music to me is very therapeutic. Yeah, it yeah, keeps definitely. Me, it, like, gets all the crazy energy out, so I just don't have it, like, when I'm interacting with people. Or even just by myself, just relaxing. Like, if I'm doing it without music, it's, like, it's not there. For the most part. It works for the most part. Would you consider, like, doing a, like, a Camel Corp song or, like, a, you know, Mayhem song or something like that live? Or do you think it's too, or Venom song? I think a Venom song could not, would actually transfer well where you do your shows, I think, but but mo- most of the other shit, like, w- what do you think about that? Would you do something like that live? So, I mean, one day I definitely want to do, like, more of a heavy project like that. Um, I just don't think now is really the time for it. Yeah. Um, for multiple reasons. Yeah, I think yeah. one is, I actually kind of disagree. I don't think it would go over well at my school. I think, because a lot of people, I think, like, they have, like, a cutoff, I think, at, like, new Metal and things like that. I feel I feel like there's gotta be some people that like it there, but it'll be like it won't be a lot of people. Um, I also just haven't worked with musicians. I think that have really wanted to do that. Um, I know there's like my two drummers, uh, Jake and um, not Gavin, but Jake and um, Aiden. They definitely want to do more heavier shit, and I would definitely would. But we have to keep into account like vocalists too. Like, of what their abilities are and what their best... It's not even their abilities. It's, like, what they're best at. They're, I typically find, like, Tanny's, like, a really good, like, hard rock, pop punk type of singer. He killed it as Green Day. Oh, yeah. yeah that's, like, like, that's up like, his alley. Shit like that and, like, Blink-182 is, like, perfectly up his alley. So, I'm, like... I love... And I love playing pop punk. Like, like I love, love playing pop punk. So, I mean, I don't really see a need to, like, go too heavy to the point where he um he can't do it. Um, or does he want to do it for that matter? Yeah, like yeah. I, like that song we did, we did your home. It's that a little bit lighter, I think, than where it really is because I used my semi hollow and semi green guitar. Yeah. But I didn't think it was worth bringing it for one song. But um, that's really like a heavy ish, like early Metallica kind of song. I think that's like perfect. Like you know, it's like decently heavy, but like Tanny, it's like good for Tanny. Um, and then for my singer at home, Gavin. He's got more of like a choirist kind of voice, like a choir. He's like a choir kid, um, and you know he sings at weddings and funerals and stuff like that. So I feel like, and I mean, he can scream a little bit, but I don't think he can scream to the point of like Cannibal Corpse. So yeah. we, I definitely go heavier with that band for sure. We go more, in, we're like at a crossroads between punk, hard rock, and metal in that band. Um, and you know, we try, we're we're trying to push the limits, but we just don't want to go too much to the point where it's like. It's not in its like you know best range, you know. Yeah. So maybe one day, like you know, if I find people that like, like, that like can like do like death growls like on a whim like that, then yeah, I mean, I would like to. I bet there's ways that I can find people like that too. But I, the other reason why I wouldn't do it now is just I'm in four bands and I really love where the directions of each like all of these are. 
Um, so it just hasn't come to it yet. The one band I would think that maybe could evolve some way in that direction is out of time because of how um, experimental the band is. I mean, the song we released, Don't Go, is not like, um, which is doing really well right now. Um, it's a, more of like a pop alternative rock type song, but we don't want to stay in that like area forever. We definitely want to do like some electronic stuff. We want to do hip hop, R and B. We want to do hard, like hardcore punk. We want to do some metal songs. That's where that's where it probably would come in. We could probably like try and feature like a vocalist and try and get like screams in. And I think that's like a way that we would be able to do it like right now. But if not, what we're, what we're planning on doing is just like waiting until, um, you know, I have more time to do things like that. But I definitely want to at one point in my life. I think um, what's the guy's name that's the lead singer of our? Uh, Tanny. I think he would kill it at doing a Midwest emo song. I think he would kill it. You know what's funny? I I hear a lot of like Midwest emo like memes and all that. I actually don't really know what Midwest emo is. Is it that much different than regular emo? If it's regular emo, then yeah, he could kill it. That's yeah, uh, like perfect it, love, like stuff like My Chemical Romance and stuff and Fall Out Boy. Kill it. He'd absolutely kill it. That's like perfect for him. How I describe it is it's like emo for frat boys. It's, it's like, like it's like not that emo. Like you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, like, he like would it's, do, yeah, he'd be perfect at it then. It's like emo kids. It's like kids that play lacrosse singing about how their girlfriend cheated on them and they say it like Kermit the Frog. Like they're like Nobody's ever treated me that way before, or it's like something like that. And it's like over the most simplest fucking like guitar. I don't even really know that much about it. I just know that it's really simple and it's like it's true. Well, I mean, I wouldn't say Teddy sounds like Kermit the Fuck. No, but... I'm saying like Midwest emo singers sound like that. Okay. Yeah, not him. He sounds okay. like he sounds like him. You know yeah, what I'm I say he sounds. Yeah. Um. I mean. Yeah. I mean. If I, if I ever come up with something like that, I guess we'll we'll see where it goes. Um, with Arkham, it's all, all the songs that we've like written so far. I've written um, all except for one of the ones that we currently perform live. How does that work? Like like writing songs with them? Like oh, I'll get to the fun part here. Um, it's always random, random shit I come up with. Um, none of the stuff I've written for Arkham has come like sitting down and trying to write it. And I'm just talking about the guitarist. I'm not talking about the lyrics. That, of course, we sit down. We'll spend, like, an entire practice, like, writing lyrics and then finalize them on the next one. Um, but for guitarists, literally, I'll just come... I'll just start, like, in the middle of, like, songs, I'll just play, like, random shit. Or, like, during, like... Like, um, like I came up with... The, the first riff that I came up with was Pocket, um, which, me, which I wrote with Jake... Well, wrote in quotes with Jake... The very first time we ever bust, which was Arkham's first gig, whatever. Um, and I just came, I literally just randomly did that while I had the cape on the third fret. Jake asked, what the hell did I just play? I repeated it. And he's like, just do that over and over again. And we have a riff. I'm like, okay, sounds funky. Let's do it. Um, Stay Away, uh, which is one of my favorite songs that it's right now it's that in your home stay away um i won't get to the lot every single song i wrote but i'll just do pocket stay away and um your home uh stay away i wrote while well, me and jake were recording our uh demo tape um i just randomly just started playing those three chords and i played like that octave main riff i'm like oh shit we have a song <laughs> like that literally sounds like any pop punk song but fuck it i love it you know what i mean yeah. Um. And then you're home. I was like, I don't know, just in like an angry metalish kind of mood, and I just started playing the main riff from that. And I'm like, okay, can we use this? I'm like, I'm like, how, I'm like, how the fuck do I just come up with this shit so randomly? Yeah. That's just how it is. I think sometimes, which is really different than like I would say that was def that's definitely different. I would definitely say Arkham and Zotronics work more that way. Like even like. Um, Septronics, like, we have this song called, like, Charity that we wrote, which is my favorite song. It's really good. Um, me and Gavin, the drummer, like, we just wrote that on a freaking whim at practice. There was no thought behind that, like, until, like, it came out. 
And then we're like, yo, this just sounds really good. Let's record it. And we did. And then we tightened it up and now we play it live, which is pretty cool. Um, but the flag that burns in, out of time is more structured. We're more like, all right, we have this idea. Let's see what we can add to it, what we can take out, what we can edit it. Especially the flag that burns definitely works like that. Like a lot of times the original song that we come up with doesn't sound, it, I mean, you can recognize it, but it doesn't sound like insanely like the final product because we edit it so much. But that's really not a bad way to work either because um, I think it's been mostly just complete improvements over the song, whether I started writing it or my other guitarist Brandon started writing it like it's just I think I think I think things just happen for a reason and it's just worked out for the best so far what's been the most like challenging song to play like where like where you, you go up to play it or like you're about to play it, like ah damn it but then you're like you know you get motivated but like what's the most like challenging song to play I'm gonna ask this cover or original you should do both you say both. Okay, I'll say both. Um, cover, I would say... Hmm. I'm sorry. Just, I'm thinking because I've done so many covers over the years. Yeah. Um, I probably would say any song... For covers, any song that I didn't pick to cover and I didn't want to do it, I don't practice it that much. So when I hear it when we play live, I, there's no specific song, but it's just a number of songs, basically, that I have, like, just didn't really want to do live, but everyone else did, so I was just like, fuck it. And it's not relative to any band, it's happened over both. And I'm just like, all right, fuck, I'm about to learn at least halfway how to do this. And then we play it live, and I'm like, damn it, I don't even remember how to play this. And then I just kind of like f like fumble around until I get it somewhat right. Um, but for originals, the one I would say that is like the hardest, believe it or not, it's actually one of Arkham's songs. I would say Waiting for Your Love. And it's ironic because I wrote the riff. But I definitely notice when I play live, I definitely mess up the main riff more often than not. Mm. It's a miracle. I mean... I think people are nice when they say I don't notice because I'm like, there's no way you don't notice me. I'm hitting, I'm hitting an open string while playing it. It's not in key, but um, I mean, I do love that song, but um, I would definitely say that one's like the definitely the hardest because sometimes I think I just don't play it too well, but that's just me. Sometimes I notice like my tone is really bad for it. Like sometimes I've noticed it sounds too punchy. I'm like, I don't know, should have changed that before we started. Yeah, that's but, what I did, Yeah. You um, you're starting an EP, or, or you, uh, with Subtronics, right? Correct. What can we expect from that? It's going to be kind of diverse in sound. It's kind of like the two like extremes of indie rock. There's gonna be some really like calm, breezy tunes. Um, and there's gonna be some more like old school like indie where it's gonna be like more upbeat, lots of distortion, fast drums, things like that. When when is that gonna drop? Uh, we do, that's TBA currently. Yeah. I would like to by the end of the year, but there's no guarantee on that. That's TBA. We want to make sure that we have it, like, perfect. Um, for an example, my band, The Flag That Burns, we dropped in the EP last month. We recorded that shit in January of mm. this past year, and we weren't completely, like, as a collective, we weren't completely satisfied with the product until maybe like the end of september because we just went back and made tweaks until yeah. we thought it was perfect um i guess that's what it's like when a sorry a i'm a perfectionist and b i'm working with perfectionists yeah so tends to you know come out that way when i'm uh, recording with um wonderland the dimitri from wonderland like he's like Love that other guy. He's he, awesome. Yeah, he's he's the geezer. And he he uh he sent he gives me like the CD of the song. He's like, yeah, like, listen to this like a hundred times and take notes. And get where he's like, let's just listen to it, you know, over the weekend. And it's like, and then he's like, all right, well, we'll mix it. And I want you to listen again and take notes and then see how we can do it different. And he's like, we just keep like you know, she just keeps on like, it's it's a good process. Like it's you know, you gotta. Sometimes it's fun to make a song quickly, but sometimes it's like you gotta just you got it's gotta pass like certain tests. Or you listen to it one morning, 
You listen to a couple of days later. Like, you got to just take a... You got to step outside of yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. You so know. I have a perfect example. So going back to Out of Time's song, Don't Go, that song was written back in 2017 or 2016. It was written a long time ago. Um, and that recording was originally recorded in 2021. It only got released in August of this year. Mm. I, I, um, I tweaked that song God only knows how many times. And um, uh, my vocalist, so he, um, I love, first off, love that guy. Shout out to him. Great dude. Um, he recorded the vocals um, and he just made some tweaks to them as well. And for and um and then I had took like uh two weeks three weeks mixing it and then it finally dropped. I definitely was like, all right, this is ready. Got a very catchy lyrics. I'm very satisfied with the instrumentals. I'm good on the mix. We'll see how it does. And then I put it out and as of right now, it has over ten thousand listens in like just over two months. So I'm assuming that people agree with me that it was ready to drop. How did you like kind of get that song out there? How did I get it out there? Like how do you like how did you promote that? Um, I promoted it through Instagram. I spammed it to everybody I know. I know my singer did the same thing. Yeah. Spammed it to everybody we know. And I think it just came through like word of the mouth, honestly. Um, I did try, I did pitch it to Spotify playlist too. I have no idea if it got put on the playlists or not. Um, so I, I actually, that may have helped. Maybe it didn't help if it didn't get put on. Um, so that's how I'm assuming it got this many listens. And I mean, I still advertise the song, honestly, cause I really, I'm was very happy with the final product of that. That was like one of my favorite songs. I think like I've ever been a part of making. Yeah. Um, what new shows are music would you say what is coming soon that you could talk about for you so i'm um, sorry what what new shows or music is coming soon that you could talk about um before you wrap this up so i would say um the flag that burns we just dropped an ep like last month so it'll be a bit until the album comes out we're hoping uh before the end of 2024 that we will have a full length album out um for you know everyone for everyone to enjoy um for arkham we started uh, actually recording. Uh, we started recording Stay Away. Um, so that should be one of the songs we'll definitely drop. But we also plan on re recording another song and dropping those as like two singles. Um, out of time, we keep, we're keep we keeping pushing forward with um, trying to get another album out. This will be our second album. We'll be dropping it so hopefully sometime next summer. Um, and we're releasing hopefully another single in... Uh, january i do have a live version of a song that's already out coming out uh november 10th so actually really soon um and subtronics we're just going to keep plugging away on that ep and yeah we'll we'll get it out there um as for shows flag that burns is not doesn't have anything coming up currently arkham the 25th i believe we're playing at the meat locker in montclair new jersey definitely pop out to that um, out of time does not have any shows currently, and Subtronics we're playing tomorrow um, for a, a Battle of the Bands fundraiser for You Dance, and then on November tenth, um, which I believe is next Saturday, we are playing um, at Rainbow Records. So that is everything that's going on with those bands right now. It's already November. Jesus. Oh, yeah, I was just thinking about that the other day. I was like, October's already over. It's going fast. It's crazy. Spooky season was quick this year. Spooky season was great. Well, thank you for coming to the show. I really appreciate talking to you. And uh, links in the description, check your music out. It was a good time talking with you. For yep. Me. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. It was. A, it was. A, we, we. I could tell you have a lot to say because you're a smart individual. He's like always on the grind when it comes to music, for real. And I and I admire you for that because not a lot of people are like putting in like the work that you put in, for real. Just letting you know that. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, links in the description and check out your uh, Instagrams and music as well. And um, be sure to check out his music on Spotify and Apple Music and any other platforms. And like, comment, share, subscribe. You're on Blue Your Soul. And peace out.